Hello guys, and today I will talk about institutions and ethics as they relate to strategy and in particular global strategy. Um, institutions are the third part of uh, the strategy tripod devised by Mike Peng. Um, so in an addition to uh, considering industry um, based factors and uh, uh, resource-based considerations, companies need to think about the impact of institutions on their strategy. Uh, so that forms uh, the so-called institution-based view of strategy. Uh, institutions also relate to ethics, um, and in particular, institution-based views uh, are applied to uh, emerging markets research and to analyzing how companies succeed in emerging markets or how uh, companies from emerging markets succeed um, and globally or in other countries or in their country um, as well. Um, so first some definitions uh, so institutions uh, um, are both formal and informal. Um, formal ones can be uh, written down uh, a little easier uh, to specify so they're formal laws, uh, regulations by governments, uh, rules devised by employers. Um, uh, one of the definitions of institutions is actually that they are the rules of the game that, that structure and govern um, human behavior, uh, dating back to Douglas North, a Nobel uh, laureate in economics, who uh, is one of the uh, most important scholars in the institution-based view. Um, now, sociologists also stressed uh, informal institutions. Um, the role of culture is extremely important in international business and global strategy ethical uh, underpinnings of institutions and norms that guide uh, group uh, behavior. Um, so thinking about some examples, how this might relate uh, to firms. So obviously firms need to abide by laws and regulations. Those might differ uh, and often differ uh, across countries. Um, the rules in the workplace uh, differ as well. Uh, in particular, the informalities uh, involved in how you uh, do business uh, in other countries are uh, vastly different, uh, say, compared uh, comparing developed and developing countries. The way you do business in um, the Democratic Republic of Congo or in Russia is quite different to the way you do business in Canada or in Australia. Um, uh, the views of, on ethics also uh, differ. There's some commonalities, but there's also quite a lot of differences, especially, say, regarding. Uh, issues such as bribes, uh, what is ethical or unethical gift, um, what's the role of personal networks and connections, um, in particular uh, related to the uh, public uh, sphere. Um, so according to uh, Professor Scott, uh, there's these three pillars that support institutions. Uh, so there's uh, a regulatory, uh, normative and cognitive uh, pillar, kind of linking to a formal and informal uh, institutional um, uh, difference. Um, so regulatory have formal rules, laws and regulations influence our behavior. Um, the normative and cognitive uh, look at first values, beliefs and norms of other players, how they influence us. So it's kind of uh, a bit of a group uh, think and how, um, how uh, the social structure affects uh, affects individual behavior and cognitive, they are more deeper internalized taken for granted values and beliefs that guide our behavior, often formed through religion, uh, through deep kind of family upbringing that we get in the initial uh, uh, number of years of our life uh, that, that are subconscious and uh, um, um, definitely are not, you know, formally written uh, and uh, um, uh, internalized and, and taken for granted. You can't even describe them, some, describe them sometimes. Um, that's how deep they are. Um, so uh, looking at how these issues actually affect strategy and competitiveness, which is kind of an outcome of strategy. So you're trying to, to be more competitive. Um, Competitiveness can be measured at firm level, but uh, there's also uh, some organizations such as the World Economic Forum that looks at competitiveness at a national level. Um, and it's important then to understand that there's public institutions, you know, the quality of the legal system in a country, 
um, protection of minority shareholders. So, so kind of um, the, the public level of institutions, the quality of, of regulations, uh, the quality of uh, government and its effectiveness. Uh, and then there's also, there's also private institutions within each uh, or within companies or industries. So how industries self-regulate themselves, uh, what governance structures do the companies uh, create for, uh, for creating uh, norms within the workplace or rules uh, of behavior. Uh, so uh, there's both public and private institutions and both of those affect, uh, affect the overall competitiveness of, of uh, a country. Um, the World Economic Forum measures that. Uh, some countries really score high on the institutional indicator. New Zealand, for example, is, is topping that list. Um, but competitiveness obviously has other factors, more technological and um, uh, um, and other factors related, say, say to innovation that are uh, not just institutional. Um, number of uh, global organizations do collect data uh, on these issues. So regulations, the uh, perhaps you know formal level of, of institutions is measured by the World Bank, and there's uh, uh, quite a nice breakdown of various types of regulations and their quality around the world. So uh, if you wanna explore that in more depth, you can look at uh, the World Bank's Doing Business Project uh, at this website. Uh, now from a more academic perspective, uh, the institution-based view, um, while it distinguishes between formal and informal, it's saying that, that sometimes, um, uh, while both of these govern human behavior, uh, the formal institutions, the rules and laws are sometimes unclear and a lot of societies, uh, when the formal constraints are unclear or fail, it is actually the informal constraints that play a larger role in, uh, in strategy and in reducing uncertainty for managers and firms. So uh, when it's not clear whether and how the regulations apply, or whether you can kind of circumvent them, uh, in some countries it's more of a you know, personal co connection uh, whether it's blood in Russia or Guanxi in China that, uh, that help navigate uh, the rules and the institutional structures in the country. So kind of uh, taking it together, institutions, firms and strategic choices are interrelated. There's a dynamic interaction between institutions and firms. There's both formal and informal constraints. Um, and uh, um, uh, these institutional considerations are also linked to the other two parts of the strategy tripod according, according to Mike Bank, to industry conditions and firm specific resources and capabilities. Now let's move uh, to ethics. So um, ethics is uh, kind of embedded in the informal institutions. Uh, there are norms, principles and standards uh, of conduct governing individual and firm behavior. Um, there's three broad approaches, um, ethical relativism, ethical imperialism, and middle of the road approach. So let's look in a little more depth at each of those and then perhaps you know, have an example to uh, demonstrate how those apply. So you could say that ethical relativism is about uh, a maxim, when in Rome, do as Romans do. Um, kind of adjust your uh, behavior to what's considered ethical in uh, a foreign country. Um, so if giving, you know, a, a gift is, is part of tradition of doing business in China um, or in Cambodia or in uh, Venezuela, um, you know, you would not, uh, would not have any, um, any bad feelings about giving an expensive bottle of, uh, of cognac to, uh, to your business partner or perhaps, you know, to government official that you are uh, trying to uh, talk to about um, an approval for an export or import license uh, for a product. Um, on the other hand, uh, for a lot of countries, uh, in particular from the West, uh, they seem to think that, you know, their rules on of, of conduct say you know not giving or accepting any gifts at all even if it's a you know um hundred dollar uh um i don't know handcrafted uh, scarf that that's not acceptable so there's one rule of ethics uh, uh no gifts uh, are really appropriate in business behavior in particular uh, is related to behavior between private and, and public. Um, and you impose that set of ethics on all your foreign subsidiaries. So even if you have a subsidiary in China or in, um, 
uh, in Cambodia or in Venezuela, our gifts would be uh, fine. You uh, will have a kind of a, a code of conduct that would say, no, that's, that's not okay. And a middle of the road approach uh, would be saying that, well, both of these extremes are um, uh, a bit, uh, uh, a bit uh, um, too much that you need to, uh, to uh, think about particular circumstances and, and principles that need to be applied universally, say no child labor, for example, or um, 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 uh, no breaking of, of basic safety rules in, in a factory or in a mine. Um, but on the other hand, you would make some exceptions. So, you know, say small gifts, I don't know, up to uh, $500 would be acceptable and you would, uh, you would bend the rules also. You would not give a, um, an expensive bottle of, uh, of, of brandy or cognac to uh, your business partner in Sweden or in Australia. Uh, you wouldn't mind doing that in uh, Guatemala or in um, um, Honduras. All right, so that's ethics and ethical approaches. Um, let's have an example. So uh, in Russia, for example, where uh, there is kind of a tradition of, uh, of close contacts between private and public sector. Uh, and sometimes you need to uh, give a gift or frankly, you know, kind of bribe public officials to get um, your operations running quicker. Um, so one of the managers in IKEA St. Petersburg store uh, speed up the, uh, the electricity approval for the new IKEA operations. Uh, provided a bit of an encouragement, a bit of a bribe to a public official from a, an electricity company to make sure that the IKEA store will open on time. The government officials were playing hard and you know, did not want to give the necessary permits uh, without the bribe. Uh, the manager did it the Russian way, but then the Swedish media uh, kind of uncovered this and this was not acceptable in the home country of this multinational in Sweden um, and resulted even in a kind of firing and consequences for them. Uh, superior for the Swedish manager of the Russian manager who kind of has done it the Russian way. Um, so many companies are, are facing these ethical dilemmas. Volkswagen, for example, has, has uh, actually been cheating and doing unethical behavior in um, uh, the United States with the emissions tests and its diesel gate. Uh, as a result of this, clearly actually ethical misstep, it lost 60% of its value after, after this scandal and I had to manage this scandal. So perhaps to finish off this presentation, companies have a couple of choices in, uh, in uh, responding strategically to these ethical scandals. Uh, they can be reactive, kind of deny responsibility, do less than required. Um, uh, some companies, uh, and traditionally this was uh, the way to act, uh, kind of more social uh, responsible way uh, has uh, uh, become a norm in the last 20, 30 years. Um, some companies are choosing the defensive strategy, admit responsible day by fight it, but do the least that's required. Uh, and the more progressive approaches are accommodative, accepting responsibility. Um, so increasingly when there's a scandal, companies actually you know, choose a leader or communicator from the company that, uh, that is really uh, clear about the blame, uh, do all that's required, and proactive approaches thinking uh, ahead, anticipating responsibility, doing more uh, than is required, and being uh, socially uh, responsible. So if you want to learn more about these topics, uh, you can look at some of my, my books, uh, such as International Business and Global Strategy, or Global Strategy, or uh, International Business in the Asia Pacific region, where you can um, learn about these topics in a bit more depth. Thank you much uh, for your attention.